This tutorial is going to show you how to use native Binance chain assets like BNB and BUSD with ThorSwap so you can do cross-chain swaps to other native assets on other chains like Bitcoin and Ethereum. So I'm at app.thorswap.finance and we will have to connect some wallets for whichever chains we are interacting with. So you'll have options depending on what exactly you're trying to do, but you'll need to connect your Binance chain side, of course. So for that, you could use XDeFi, which is a multi-chain wallet, Wallet Connect with Trust Wallet or Ledger directly, or a key store wallet for all chains. Then for the other side of your swap, you just need to connect either the same wallet like XDeFi or key store for a multi-chain wallet or connect a different wallet for the other side. For example, you could connect Trust Wallet with Binance Chain and then swap to Bitcoin on Ledger. So you can have multiple connected at the same time. For this example, I'll connect all chains with XDeFi so we can do multiple swaps across a variety of chains. So I'm going to connect. And if your assets are currently on a centralized exchange like Binance itself or KuCoin or FTX, then first thing you're gonna have to do is send those out of the exchange and into your own self-custodied wallet. So this is my XDeFi connected, which is every chain. So if you need to set this up for the first time, we have a separate video on that. You could also set up a key store wallet, but basically all you would have to do is copy the chain address for the token that you're sending out. In this case, we're talking about Binance Chain, BNB, and BUSD, and BEP2 assets. So you would copy your BNB address, and this would be the address that you would withdraw to from your centralized exchange account. One note on this, but XDeFi supports Binance Smart Chain as well, which is different than Binance Chain. And those addresses would start with 0x, like an Ethereum address. That is not compatible with ThorChain and ThorSwap. We're talking about the regular Binance Chain BEP2 assets, and the address will start with BNB. Be very careful not to send Binance Chain assets to a Binance Smart Chain address or vice versa. So I'm starting with this BNB and we're going to do a couple of swaps. So on the main swap area, you're first just going to select your from asset and then your to asset. So from, I'm going to select my BNB and to, let's swap to some native on-chain layer one Bitcoin. Let's just swap half a BNB because I'm going to do a few swaps as examples. And you'll see the expected output amount of Bitcoin and the total fee right here. This fee depends on which chains you're swapping to and from as you're doing real on-chain transactions. So BTC is a bit more expensive than a chain like Binance. And we're seeing both the inbound BNB and the outbound BTC fee reflected here. As a quick example, if we did ETH instead with the same 0.5, we would see the gas is quite a bit higher just because of ETH itself. But let's do... Bitcoin here first. And to do the swap, I don't need to have any Bitcoin already. All I need to have is my from asset. So in this case, I could have nothing in any of my wallets except the BNB that I'm sending from, and I'm good to go. I don't need any Rune, the Thor chain token. I don't need any Thor, the Thor swap token. I don't need any of the receiving asset either, just the from. The only time that that's slightly different is if you are sending a BEP2 asset or an ERC20 asset, then the send fee for those assets is in the gas asset of that chain. So for example, to send BUSD, you do have to pay gas in BNB or to send an ERC20 like USDT or USDC, the gas fee for that is in ETH. So for those, you would need to have some ETH or to have some BNB, but otherwise you only need to have the asset you're swapping from. So let's swap this half BNB for some BTC. We'll see a confirmation page and approve. Now the transaction is being sent to our wallet for us to sign it. And we just confirm the transaction. And then you'll see the swap pending here. The 0.5 BNB is going into ThorChain and we're waiting for this BTC to come back out. We can track the BNB send on a BNB block explorer or we can track the overall swap on ThorYield. If the swap is taking a while, it might be due to the outbound queue on ThorChain. Larger swaps can be throttled, slowed down a little bit as a security feature. So if it's taking some time, that might be why, as well as the speeds of the two blockchains that you're using. And now we can see it's done, showing check mark there. We can check our wallet and native Bitcoin is in our wallet. This Bitcoin wallet could have been a different wallet from XDeFi. It could have been a ledger address. You could even manually enter a recipient address by going to advanced mode and set custom recipient and then just pasting in a Bitcoin address. Just be careful not to do this to a centralized exchange because there's no memo in this field. So only use this if you know what you're doing and you are 
doing it to your own non-custodial wallet. So those steps would be exactly the same if we were swapping to Rune, Litecoin, ETH, anything available on ThorSwap. But let's just go over some other Binance assets. So let's actually swap to some BUSD. And this swap is of course within the same chain, but I can do this on ThorSwap as well. You'll see the fee is extremely small for Binance chain, as well as it's extremely fast. So let's confirm this swap as well. Sign it in your connected wallet. And that approved the BNB in, and then we're just waiting for the BUSD to be sent back out. A few seconds later, we've got the BUSD showing under our Binance chain wallet. Got some BNB left still, and now we have our BUSD here. We could take that BUSD, we could reverse this, and now we're swapping from BUSD, and let's swap to some native Doge. So let's just swap 20 bucks of BUSD to some Doge. Again, see the fee breakdown. You can expand this if you want to get into the details here. And so in this case, the gas for the send in of the BUSD will actually be taken in BNB. So you have to have a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of BNB in your wallet but then the gas fee for the Doge on the way back out will be taken before it comes back to you. So again, all you would need in this case is your BUSD and some BNB, but in other cases like ETH, Bitcoin, BNB itself, then you'll only need the from asset. So let's confirm this swap again. Confirm. Again, you can always track on Thor Yield, and we do have a separate video going more in depth on this if you're ever stuck feeling unsure if it's going through correctly. And ThorSwap also has 24 seven support in Discord. So if you do think something's wrong, you can always get help there as well. So that Doge has been received. Let's do a swap the other direction and let's swap our Doge back to BNB. And let's just swap all of this Doge, swap, confirm, and sign it. So that swap's done. It did take a couple of minutes just because of the speed of the Doge chain. So just a reminder that the time and the fees depend on the chains you're using because these are real on-chain transactions. Also, if you head over to Dashboard, you can see all of the pools to easily see all of the compatible assets. And over time, this is gonna be a lot more potential assets for swaps, but that's all you need to know to do cross-chain self-custody swaps to and from Binance chain using ThorSwap. And we'll also have a follow-up video to this to using your Binance chain assets to earn yield on ThorSwap.